into hydrated salts and some calculations involved with them and asking you to give uh, two examples and I suppose uh, you really need to give the amount of water of crystallization as well as the name of the compound because you can have the anhydrous version where the water has been driven off so it would be copper sulfate pentahydrate CuSO4 5H2O that would be an example and it has the salt has a fixed number of water molecules per formula unit it's an ionic compound so its basic unit is the formula unit but not all salts are hydrated sodium chloride common salt table salt isn't um, and what we want to know is how the water molecules are attracted to the salts and you can explain pause this and use a salt with m plus x minus and a water molecule and the hint here you need to show water's polarity and uh, the water is attached by intermolecular forces to the metal iron so here we've got tin 2 chloride dihydrate and there's a dot between the two molecules of water crystallization and the formula of the salt and so if we just show the tin 2 cation in the middle we showed the uh, structure of water with the covalent bond and the polarity delta plus delta minus uh, delta minus by the oxygen the more electronegative component in the compound and the dotted lines are the intermolecular forces uh, between a dipole on the water and the iron of the, the tin. So what happens when you heat a hydrated salt and is it going to be a physical or chemical change? Again, pause to answer some of this. So here would be a, a, an equation for the tin 2 chloride again. Um, and so you haven't got any new compounds there. Uh, it's easily reversed. Uh, you've, the water has evaporated, um, though it doesn't evaporate from the crystals. Um, very quickly at all uh, but by heating you can add water to get the hydrated salt and then it would have to recrystallize out so here's some calculations and we've got some uh, uh, rhodium trichloride here and 20.49 percent in this particular compound uh, is due to the presence of water so a fifth of the mass of the compound is of the hydrated salt is water and how are you going to calculate the actual formula dot x h2o how many molecules x of water have you got now there are some strategies so you have to calculate percentages uh, of both the salt part and the water of crystallization the hydration you've been given the hydration already here uh, convert the percentages to the mass in 100 grams. Choose 100 because percentage is a fraction of 100. Uh, and then convert that mass for both the hydrated water part and the salt to moles. And then find the simplest whole number ratio of the moles. And then write the ratio with whole numbers. So round up, round down. So for the uh, rhodium trichloride 20.49 is water so subtract it from 100 to get the percentage of the salt the what would be the anhydrous salt and uh, here we've got the answer to that and then we convert the percentages to a mass in 100 grams now that's the same going to be the same number in 100 grams so same digits, but we've got a different unit. And then we can calculate the number of moles. So the mass here, the components in 100 grams of the salt and the water, divide by the molar mass. So for water, we've got molar mass. For 
rhodium trichloride, we've got the molar mass, and using the numbers from number two, uh, you divide each of them. So we end up with 1.137 moles of water and 0 0.380 moles of rhodium-3 chloride. Um, and now we want the simplest whole number ratio. So out of the number of moles you've just calculated, divide by the smallest. Oh, that's the rhodium trichloride. And so you're dividing by 0 0.8. 380 into both of them and you get for water uh, simplest ratio is 2.99 to 1 so you're going to round um, the 1 is already and the 2.99 isn't rocket science to get 3 moles of water to every 1 mole of rhodium 3 chloride and the formula is in the box at the bottom it's how you would write it uh, now just for those interested um, look at some rhodium. Uh, element number uh, 45, it's pretty unreactive and like platinum, um, called a noble metal, indeed gold is as well, and about 80% of all rhodium produced is used in catalytic converters in cars to reduce the amount of unburned hydrocarbons that are in the exhaust gas and carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide, NOx. And a thin layer of rhodium covers some jewellery to stop it corroding. And some people, if they have allergies, the rhodium is uh, unreactive as well. Um, and rhodium 3-chloride uh, used in preparing different catalysts, uh, making acetic acid and making aldehydes from alkenes. And a reminder of those five steps. You need the percentages of the salt, percentages of water of hydration, and you can get that from an experiment. Indeed, you probably already have. And convert the percentages to mass in 100 grams. Those are going to be the same numbers. Convert the mass in grams to moles by dividing that mass by the molar mass of the particular substance find the simplest whole number ratio of the moles that you've just discovered and you're going to divide both of the numbers by the smallest number so one of them will always come out as one and then you're going to write the salt to water ratio in whole numbers and you can write the formula um, now try this one uh, calculate x the number of molecules of water crystallization in barium chloride and here you've got, it contains 14.75% water of crystallization. And you can just pause on this one, a reminder, a double reminder of the steps, the strategies to find the empirical formula of a hydrated salt. And thank you to WIS again and uh, Washington International School Team Science.